Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments. And ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey, racing fans, welcome back to the second of three Kentucky Derby editions of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap. We're just a few short days away from the 2016 Kentucky Derby. Excitement is in the air. Handicappers are doing their final bits of homework, looking to get that edge that will lead to a big score on Saturday afternoon. One of those questions is whether they should single the fourth straight favorite in the Kentucky Derby to win Nyquist or whether he's a bit vulnerable. Well, there are several reasons to think both. The first reason to like Nyquist is pretty obvious. He's never lost. He comes into the race perfect. He was a two-year-old champion, and he's shown the ability to win even when he's not at his best like he did in the front runner at Santa Anita Park last fall. He's pretty impressive. He's had a lot of class. He's done it from on the pace, and he's done it from just off the pace, and he even did it from well off the pace at, at Keeneland in October in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. That race is really hard for me to ignore. Every time I start thinking about whether I want to toss Nyquist, I go back to that race where he was wide throughout and just really was not in the position he likes to be in, yet was still good enough to get to the wire first, holding off Keith DeSormo train swipe in the final strides. Another reason to like Nyquist is that tactical speed. Like American Pharaoh and like California Chrome, he keeps himself out of trouble by putting himself into the race early, and then he does not necessarily need the lead. In fact, he's probably better off sitting just off the pace, in which he'll probably do that on Saturday with the likes of Danzy Candy and Outwork likely to outsprit him early. A third reason to like Nyquist is ability to win at multiple tracks. Some horses come in to the Kentucky Derby having only won over one or two tracks and in one region of the country. Not true of Nyquist. He won in Southern California. He's won in Kentucky in the Breeders' Cup. And in most recently, he won in Florida at the Gulfstream Park at the Florida Derby for the $1 million event. Plus, he won that $1 million bonus. What a score for Redham and O'Neill. Well, while it's obvious why someone would like an undefeated Colt coming into the Kentucky Derby that has won the races, the caliber of Nyquist, there are some reasons to think he might be a bit vulnerable on Saturday. One of them to me is the, is the conditioning coming into the race. Yes, it's a very strong angle these days to be coming into the Kentucky Derby third off the layoff. However, I prefer two routes, not the one sprint and one route that Nyquist has coming in. Yes, they were both impressive wins, first in the San Vicente, where he held off Exaggerator in, in a very fast time in the final strides, and then the Florida Derby, where he did look like he got tired at the end, which definitely points to another reason why I'm not that crazy about Nyquist at a short price. I just cannot get past the way he finished that race. Some say he might have been bored in the stretch or he switched back to his left lead like he does in a lot of his workouts. But to me, that that finish was just not that impressive. Despite putting away Mo Heyman, it really worries me the way he finished that race and it's the race he's coming in off of into this Kentucky Derby. Another reason to not like him is the obvious short price. If you're taking 3-1 to one or 4-1 to one in a race like this, you have to truly believe he has at least a 25% chance of winning the race. Yes, he should avoid traffic trouble with his tactical speed, but what if he breaks poorly, or what if he simply is not good enough? Perhaps his pedigree catches up with him. Maybe he's just better suited for shorter distances like a mile and a mile and eighth. We will find out. But those questions make me a little bit leery always on taking a three or four to one, especially when young horses are doing something new for the first time. And of course, they're all doing something new, going a mile and a quarter at Churchill Downs on the first Saturday of May always presents some interesting questions. Finally, I just don't know if this cold is as good as some of the ones before him that have won the race to favorite. Yeah, maybe as good as California Chrome coming in, but there's no way this horse is as good as American Pharaoh in my opinion. And American Pharaoh, let's not forget, was all out to beat Firing Line in last year's event, and look what he became. This race to me, while the favorites have won, is just not a good race to take the favorite. Yes, the point system has changed things, kept the rabbits out, kept it a little less chaotic, but a 20-horse field to me, I liked a better price 
than three or four to one. I am willing to tip my cap almost every year to a favorite winning this race. Yes, some people have said, hey, you've been getting beat up over the last few years. And yeah, I've lost. I don't really go that heavy in the Kentucky Derby unless I have a strong feeling. But I can point back to a few years, like when Charismatic beat Menifee, or when Victory Gallup, who I liked at a price, ran second to Real Quiet, or even War Emblem, where I had big scores that carry me through these years where the favorites win. I would never fault anyone for using Nyquist, just like I did not last year with American Pharaoh. But to me, this is a race to take a chance. You rarely get 20 horses doing something new for the first time. And no matter how good a horse looks on paper, I've seen some good ones beaten this day that just did not run their race at Churchill Downs in the Kentucky Derby. So do what you will with Nyquist. I certainly do not want to talk anyone off of any horse in this year's event. I just think taking a bigger price is the way to go this year. And we'll talk about that and more in the final Kentucky Derby edition where I'll give out my final picks maybe a few suggested wagers, and just, you know, the excitement is so great this time of year. Try to, uh, you know, not talk yourself off any horses. Try to look at some of the other races and not overanalyze this one. There are so many great races on Friday and Saturday, including Friday's Kentucky Oaks, which they just drew uh, the post positions for. Really looking forward to that one. Hoping Landover C can get it done for us out here in Southern California. think she has a big shot. But back to the Kentucky Derby. We will see you in a few days once the draw is done, and we'll have our final selections for you and more in that last Kentucky Derby edition of Shap Cap. Thank you. Good luck until then, and have a great day.